Symmetry is something that you and I have been dealing with for a long time um, in school early on, but also just our bodies. Our bodies are built very symmetric in terms of their design. And that kind of symmetry actually that our bodies are designed on is line symmetry or reflectional symmetry. It's the kind of symmetry where if you had a line that everything on one side would map onto the other and that makes it symmetrical. So for instance, um, that second shape, you could put a line here and it would map onto itself. You could also do one here and it would work kind of in a cool way. This would work and so would this. So that particular shape has many lines of symmetry. Same thing with that last one is uh, there would be a number of them through each of those uh, points there and so there'd be five of those. So there'd be four of these and one of those. These are line symmetry. And again, it's when it maps onto itself using a line where all points uh, map onto itself. This first guy doesn't have any lines of symmetry, actually. I mean, if we tried, can you see how those don't actually... It has some symmetry, but it's not line symmetry. So that would be zero. In this case, you would have a vertical one would work you would have a horizontal one. But those would be the only ones that would work. The, these little tips here, they're not uh, perfectly symmetrical, kind of they're different, and so you couldn't do the diagonals. This guy also has uh, symmetry, but not the symmetry we want. Um, this is not a, a line of symmetry, so that wouldn't quite work. Um, and we couldn't cut it this way, that wouldn't work, the diagonal wouldn't work, so it also has zero. The rectangle um, definitely has some symmetry, there's one and another one. Lots of students would like to believe that the rectangle has more than two, but it doesn't. Let's look at a rectangle a little bit closer. If this was our rectangle, and we wanted to try a diagonal line of symmetry like this one. Can you tell that this line would reflect like somewhere over here basically and this line would reflect over to here. This would be the reflection uh, using the, the diagonal if we were using that diagonal as our line of reflection this would be the result here. Uh, it would not land on the rectangle where we would want it to land. So it only has the two lines of symmetry. It has the vertical one and the horizontal one. Shading problems are a lot of fun. I like doing them. They give you a certain group of squares that need to be shaded in a particular way to obtain uh, one line of symmetry. So in the first case, again, I'm only going to show you one or two of these cases, but uh, if I shaded uh, this one, and this is already shaded, and this one, then I would have one line of symmetry going this way. Remember, it's, it's looking at all of the, of the blocks. So if these three are shaded, that would only have one line of symmetry. Um, if I wanted to do it differently, maybe I shaded... Um, like this one, this one's already shaded, this one, this one, and this one. That would also have one because of this going in this direction. Um, how about two lines? Let's see exactly two lines. Well, if I shaded this one and this one, I would have this line working and I would have this line working. And um, that would be it. So that would that would work in that case. Four. How about four? Let's try. I think this would work for four, wouldn't it, if I shaded these ones? Now, again, there are many other answers, but I'm just showing you the idea of shading. That would work, and so would this one. This one has a little bit different starting environment, and so I probably would try this as my shading. And I think we're good to go if that was my shading, because this would cut it, this would cut it diagonals would work and so we'd get exactly four. So those are just some examples of how to do the shading. Always remembering that it deals with all nine in this particular case of the squares, not just the ones you shaded. Another type of symmetry is rotational symmetry. And this is the symmetry when you look at rotating the figure between 0 and 360. 
and you are looking for it to map onto itself. So again, in this range uh, from 0 to 360, and um, we look at, again, that idea that how many times, if I was turning that shape, how many times would it map onto itself each time? So let's take a look. There are a couple of uh, more uh, specific things to the rotational symmetry, which are the order and as well as the angle involved. So the first thing is the angle of rotation when you look at symmetry, rotational symmetry, and you're always dealing with the smallest angle that works. So if I was rotating this, let's say it was a square, um, then that first increment or turn of 90 degrees would map it onto itself. So in that case, the angle would be a 90 degree angle because that was the first rotation to get there. The order is a different thing though. The order is the number of positions in which they look exactly the same. Now, if you have to turn the shape all the way around before you see it uh, map onto itself, that's 360 would be its angle, right? It would take you all 360 to get there. Then your order is a 1. And I want you to know, this is very important, an order of 1 really means there is no rotational symmetry in the shape because you took the full turn to just get it back to its start. Let's go back to the square, though. The square hits it at 90, it would hit it again at 180, it would hit it again at 270, it would hit it back here. So that was one, two, three, four times. So the angle of the square is 90, the uh, order is a four. And I want you to notice there's a nice relationship between that. Four turns of 90 is 360. Um, one turn of 360 is also 360. 360 is a very important part of this calculation. In fact, the order, if I had the order number, and if I multiplied it by the angle, that smallest angle, I would always equal 360. So like in that square, there were four turns of 90, that's 360. In the rectangle, there would be two turns of 180. That would also be 360. In a shape that has no rotational symmetry, an order of one, that would be a one full turn of 360 and would be 360. So this is a nice little way to determine order, angle, and the value. I can see that this has an order of three. This would turn three times uh, landing onto itself which actually helps me to know the angle must have been 120, right? Because together, they, when you multiply them, gives you that 360. Here, I can see that if I was to turn this, it would land once and twice, so its order would be to making its angle 180. There are five points to the star, aren't there? And each time I would land onto it being symmetrical. The order's five. And if I take 360 and divide it by 5, it helps me to know that that angle is a 72 degree angle. This guy has an order of 1 and an angle of 360 and has no rotational symmetry because of its design. Once again, let's look at a few shading problems. I'm looking for an order of 2, so it has to turn at 180 and land on itself. I think if I just shaded those two with this one that was given, it would take 180 to land and 180 more. So I think that's one solution. There are others, though. Um, 90, let's see. If I was doing 90, maybe the way I would do 90 might look something like this because this one would land on that and then land and then land and then land. Uh, 180 at 2, let's see. So maybe that's all I would do is maybe just that. Um, that, if you turned it 180, would land onto itself and then land back. 90 would force me to maybe fill in some of these. Again, these aren't the only answers, 
but they're just quick ones that come to my mind. There would be an order of four. I like these shading problems. Again, always remember that it's, it's accounting for all of the squares in the diagram and not just the shaded ones.